Hi guys! Today I want to talk about the pros and cons of fan art. Now, fan art is something that I'm really interested in, both as a fan of media and consuming fan art, as well as being a creator of fan art. I have been doing different types of fan art for several years now. My first, like, big fandom was Doctor Who, and I did a lot of, like, edits and like photoshop collage type of things and then after that I kind of moved into like the emo alternative fandom and the MCR fandom mostly on tumblr and did a lot of fan art that way and now I also have like a side account for my k-pop fan art so I've been doing fan art for a long time and I think it's a really interesting topic and a really interesting Kind of like subculture in fandom. However, I do think, like many things, it has its pros and cons, and that's what I wanted to discuss today. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the pros. Now the first big pro that I find in fan art is it's fun. Having fun making fan art is what it's all about. It's basically just taking something that you love so much and you're so passionate about and just making art for fun. It's not really for anything else. It could just be for you. It could be such a change and like a remix of the media that you might be the only one that likes it. And that's okay because you're having fun and creating art. Another pro is it expresses your interests. Sharing your interests is a great way to find community and to make friends and to kind of have like an online presence, I guess. Um, I've always found it really fun to be in a fandom of some sort and making fan art is just kind of another facet of that. You are creating content for this community that you really like and it's fun and it's usually like pretty drama free. Um, I'm speaking from my own experience of creating fan art. There's a lot of different little rabbit holes we could go down with that but that would be for another video. Today we're just talking about the pros and cons. A pro in that community kind of category is making friends. I've made a lot of friends when I was in the kind of MCR fandom on Tumblr and I still have them today and I really value those friendships and I think kind of talking about your shared interests and making fan art is a great way to kind of engage yourself in a community of something you really like. Another pro is gaining followers. So if you're making really good fan art or something that people like or something that people want to see, you're going to get a following for it that has its own benefits and issues. So I would I would put that in pros though. Getting followers is, is a good thing. Another pro is getting recognition from your faves. I posted this like kind of like warm up drawing study thing painting um, on Twitter of Gerard Way when he was still active on Twitter and he noticed it and liked it and like commented and whatever and that was like a huge thing for me. It was really exciting. So you shouldn't be making fan art to get recognition. That shouldn't be the sole like drive of making it, but it can be kind of just like a fun little bonus that could happen along the way. Another pro of making fan art is you could become famous for it. Probably not, but you might. An example I wanted to use for this video is Alice XC. This artist was making a lot of Doctor Who art around the time that I was online doing Doctor Who things and it was just everywhere on tumblr like her blog was really popular she was in the featured page all this stuff and she was basically just making fan art and just like whipping out her tablet and like posting these awesome paintings and now she is like doing comic book covers and doing officially licensed art for bbc and uh star wars and all this stuff and that's really cool how she was literally just making fan art and now she's like creating a professional career out of it. Another pro to making fan art is you're widening your subject matter. So maybe you are really into like a fantasy show or movie and so you're bringing these fantasy elements into your artwork or you're into a certain band that has a certain sound and you're bringing some of their aesthetic and their style into your artwork. I definitely noticed that I've brought in a lot of grunge and alternative elements through music into art based on my fandom's experiences and that's something that has influenced my art in a big way. Having a variety of interests is going to overall influence your artwork because ultimately what you're making is going to be influenced by all these other little things that you've picked up along the way. So making fan art is really fun and cool 
but there are some cons. In my experience making fan art, I have had a really good time. I've also had not such a good time. My biggest con is when you lose interest. You're probably not going to want to stay in a certain fandom or you're not gonna love a certain band forever. For example, I still love MCR. Like I still love them as a band, everything. I still like their music, but I'm not driven to make fan art of them anymore. I don't have that passion to express how much I love their music through my art. But one of the big cons that goes with that is losing followers. Those followers might be expecting more from you. They might follow you for, let's say, like a Star Wars piece and continue to follow you for that. And when you start posting drawings of, you know, bicycles or whatever you do, they're going to be like, what the heck? I followed you for Star Wars stuff. That can kind of create a divide between your artwork and your audience and how you're perceived as an artist. So something to think about if you're going to be posting a lot of fan art is maybe keeping it separate from your main line of work so that people can follow you for your personal artwork and they can follow you for your fan artwork. I have a separate account for my K-pop art because I know that if I started posting that on my main account, it would cause a lot of kind of dissonance with what I'm trying to go for. It is going to be very different from the original artwork that I put out and create and want to show to, you know, potential clients or have in my portfolio where fan art is just kind of like this little side thing that's fun. Maybe I have it in my sketchbook or whatever. Some people aren't going to want to see that. I know it definitely can alienate a lot of your followers if you're posting a bunch of stuff they're not interested in. Keeping that separately will let the people that are interested in it be able to follow it and see it and the people that aren't interested to be able to carry on and look at your regular artwork as per usual. Another con to making fan art is the copyright issues. If you're a fan artist and you want to start selling your work or using it for more than just personal use, you're probably going to run into some copyright issues. You are taking a piece of media that isn't yours and kind of remixing it or doing a portrait or using lyrics from something and then distributing that as your own artwork. You're technically kind of not following the rules. With art, there's no rules. You can create whatever you want, use whatever you want, but if you're going to be using that and selling it and distributing it for money, you need to be careful of copyright. You can't just go out and sell your fan art or create goods that have these licensed characters on it and get away with it because that's somebody else's work that they've either copyrighted or have the rights to that you don't. For the most part, I've always just kept my fan art as personal work and not really used it for anything else or tried to distribute it or sell it. I did make a fanzine for Frank's uh, solo project album, and I'm lucky enough that he's a small enough artist that basically gives permission to artists for things like that, where he's like, oh, no, I want people to make artwork out of my music or be inspired by it and share that with others. I really respect that because it's very like punk rock and it's very like DIY culture to kind of take something and recreate it in your own way and not have to worry about like, oh, well, I used a lyric in that, so I need to pay him a certain amount of money or license it out or whatever. Like small artists, for the most part, if they're chill, aren't going to care about stuff like that. I was really lucky enough to have my zine that I made not have any issues. I think if I would have made something like that and used like Fall Out Boy lyrics or something, that would get shut down and I would, would be infringing on copyright and either have to just take everything down, not make any money off of it, or even worse, like pay a fine or something for it. And that's just not, that's just not something you want to have to deal with. Another thing that isn't particularly a con, but kind of a topic I wanted to bring up is, is fan art even art? In my opinion, I think it is. I think if you're creating something or even remixing a piece of media to tell your more of your story, you're creating artwork. A lot of people have also compared fan art to fan fiction, where you're taking existing characters and kind of remixing it to fit your own narrative or what you wish could have happened in the story, or maybe what if you wanted this character to look a different way or um, dress a different way or be born in a different era, or what if you want these two characters to be gay? It's a great way to express your own version of a, somebody else's story. Fan art can kind of go hand in hand with that, where you can take something that's pre-existing and change it to fit your own story or your own narrative of that. Is that still classified as art? 
I think this can be a really interesting debate. There's that one like text post or something that's like, you can call it Renaissance art, but it's still just Jesus fan art. And I think that just like captures that concept perfectly because it's like, okay, if art has to be something that you're just creating out of nothing or you're coming up with your own characters or whatever, like, like you didn't come up with the concept of Jesus and so you're doing all this artwork of him and that's considered like fine art. So I think that's really interesting. Um, I want to know what you guys think. I want you to comment and let me know if you think that fan art should be classified as art or not. Maybe there's a difference between art and fine art in your opinion. I don't know. I just want to hear what you guys have to say about that. So those are my pros and cons to fan art. I would like to dive deeper into some of these other topics of fan art. I think it's a really fascinating thing and I love fan culture and like fan lore. I love learning about it and like hearing about it and hearing stories from other people in different fandoms. Like it's just really interesting to me. So if there's something along those lines that you want to see a video about, please let me know. Otherwise, I look forward to discussing if fan art should be classified as art in the comments with you guys. And I will see you all next time. Also, what do we think of this setup? Is this like okay? I'm filming on my phone and it actually ends up having better like video quality than my camera, which doesn't autofocus. So I already filmed this whole thing with my other camera and it was completely out of focus. And then Maple knocked my background over and my camera over. So we just we just had to had to restart. But yeah. Let me know what you think.